everything set up for our host or our presenter. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you our presenter, Lacey Rowe. Lacey has worked with American Airlines Credit Union for over seven years and says that her favorite part of her job is helping members grow their businesses. A few facts from Lacey, she has three dogs and recently earned her master's degree in digital marketing from East Tennessee State University. Lacey, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much, Butel. Hello, everybody out there. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being with us today. So we're going to get right into it. But first, here's the statement. Um, the information given in this presentation is not legal advice or legal, legal opinion and shouldn't be construed as such. Please consult with qualified legal counsel as to your particular needs. The sources referred to here, including any products or websites, are for informational purposes only and do not represent any endorsement by the credit union of such products or websites. Now that we got the legal disclaimer out of the way, let's move on. <laughs> what are we going to cover today? Um, in this presentation, we're going to talk about what is branding and why is it important to, to your small business. We're going to talk about a brand strategy, how to build your brand, interacting with your customers, protecting your brand, and we'll have time for questions as well. And then we're going to talk about uh, how we can help the different products and services we have available to small businesses, small business owners here at the credit union. Um, and then we'll let you know how to get in contact with us. If you would like more information, or if you want to talk to us about our products or anything like that. Okay, moving light right along. Here we are at our 1st poll question. Yes. Thank you, Lacey. Mm -hmm. uh, again, everybody that's in the webinar, we appreciate you being here. Uh, feel free to jump in and participate on the uh, polling question. So polling question number one is, where are you in your small business journey? A, my small business is up and running. B, I'm in the process of setting up my businesses. Uh, C, I have not started yet. I'm here for more information. So the polling question should be there available for you to answer. And again, as mentioned before, feel free to uh, throw a guess in there. Um, I'm going to say, Lacey, that being this, that this is uh, some great information that you're providing, that most people are C. They have not yet started their business because they're gathering as much their information. information. Yes, okay. so you want to make sure that um, our members are very savvy when they are starting this journey and that's okay. what we're here for them. So I'm going to say C, but we'll see in a okay. moment. Um, All right. Their webinar I'm going to guess. Still running here, but go ahead. Okay. I'm going to guess just based on the last time we did a webinar, I'm going to guess that a bunch of people, uh, most people have their small business up and running because a lot of people were in the process last time. So I'm thinking maybe they came back and now they've gotten started. <laughs> That's a good, good way of thinking. No doubt. Yeah. All right. So Lacey, it seems like uh, the participation participants are very eager as they all jumped in and partook on the survey itself, uh, okay. the polling question. Um, so we have a quarter of a percent that are in B, I'm in the process of setting up my business. Okay. That's awesome. That's what we're here to help you guys out. And then we have uh, a tie for the second, and it's between uh, my small business is up and running. And C, um, I have not started yet. I'm okay. here for more information. <laughs> so again, none of these are wrong answers. They're all correct answers. That's why we're here to provide this benefit to you all and to anybody that's uh, in, intending in the future um, to open a business with us as well, a business account. That's awesome. Uh, thank yeah. you, Lacey. Go for it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for participating there. So let's just jump right into it. So what is your business brand? What am I talking about when I talk about your business's brand? So there's many ways to define the word, but in the context of this presentation, we're referring to the marketing concept that establishes an identity or a person's perception of a product service experience or organization that helps differentiate it from its competition. Consider your own experiencing as a consumer. Uh, so 
to help you kind of understand branding and what what I mean by it um, is to to think of yourself in the consumer role. Um, as a consumer, what brands are you the most loyal to? Just get you know that in your head. Oh, I I always buy this certain brand of blue jeans or I always buy this certain brand of tennis shoes or something like that. Why are you loyal to that brand? Think about that. What brands make you excited to try their product? And um, have you ever had an experience of seeing a new product from a brand that you love and you immediately had to buy it? Um, if you've had that experience, I know I have. My example is this uh, dishwashing, not dishwashing, uh, clothing detergent that I love the smell of released a uh, like a candle that smelled like the detergent that I really like. And I will tell you, as soon as I saw that in the store, I ran to it. I was immediately, I knew I wanted that because I love the way it makes my clothing smell. Uh, and so now I want to light a candle and have my room smelling like that. <laughs> so that's my example of uh, brand loyalty, because before I, I took a look, I knew I wanted to spend my money. So that reaction happened in part because a company selling a product service or experience or organization has developed a connection of some type with you. So that's what we are going to discuss today is how do you small business owners create that kind of connection with your customers? Okay, moving along. Why is it important? So let's look at these statistics. Why is it important? 65% of a company's business comes from existing customers. So people who have already purchased something and are coming back for more. 65% are returning customers. That's a lot of revenue there. 56% um, of customers stay loyal to brands which get them, meaning that you believe that uh, they are similar to you in a certain way or they get that you a certain things mean a lot to you, ethics mean a lot to you, or something that brands that align themselves with you personally. 56% of customers stay loyal to brands that make them feel that way. 82% um, of companies agree that retention is cheaper than uh, acquisition. In fact, recruiting new customers costs five times more than retaining existing ones. So keeping the ones you have happy is actually less expensive than acquiring new customers. Less expensive in terms of staff, uh, you know, marketing staff, advertisement prices, um, everything that goes into acquiring new customers. Branding is important to your small business because it helps you stand out from the competition. There is going to be competition no matter what industry you're in. You're going to be competing with other businesses. Branding will help you stand out as, as something a little bit different, help people remember you as well. It helps you build loyalty with customers and build trust with customers. Um, create customers who connect with your brand and are enthusiastic and excited to try your business, product, services, experience, or organization. So one way to understand um, this is, again, to... Uh, Oh, take a look at your own activities or, or uh, preferences as a customer, as a consumer of something that you love, and how did they acquire you? How did this brand acquire you in the first place? Was it, is it something that, oh, that my mom used this, so I use it, or is it something that you stumbled upon yourself? So just really think about yourself as a consumer, and you might even pull your friends. Why do you always buy this certain uh, brand of a thing or service or something like that? And ask people what their thought process was. That really helps you understand, you know, consumer behavior and trying to translate branding into something that you can do for your small business. Okay, talking about a branding strategy. According to marketing and branding expert, Marty Newmeyer, a branding strategy is a plan for a systemic development of brand in alignment with a business strategy. A brand strategy helps you to understand your business's identity and acts as a blueprint to help you communicate it. It is understanding how your business is perceived by your targeted customers and then using that knowledge to connect with your customers. So 
nothing essentially is happening by accident. And you look at any big company, any big company that, uh, you know, American Airlines or or anything like that, everything that they're putting online on their website, on their social media, anything that is uh, advertising their business did not happen by accident. It was planned probably months ago, if not longer. And it w went under the spotlight and it went over, you know, several people behind the scenes, looked at it, added some disclaimers, the fine print, all of that. It's none of it is happening by accident. All of it is part of a strategy. So this message is a part of a larger business strategy. <laughs> we as small business owners, we do that on a much smaller scale. Um, and it's something that you definitely want to plan out. For example, if you uh, sell jewelry or something and you know that Mother's Day is, well, it just passed, but Mother's Day is coming up. You want to plan for your messages about Mother's Day. Hey, Mother's Day is coming up. We've got some beautiful jewelry for mom. And you don't want to wait till the day of to say, oh, yeah, it's Mother's Day. You're going to lose out on things. So you're going to create this brand strategy where you're releasing those messages and you're talking to your audience at the right time um, as well. Okay. Here we are. Oh, hey, yes, I'm sorry. I, I was answering an an uh, <laughs> somebody's asking um, a question here in the chat and I'm answering Ooh, here. Really quick. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, let me click this here uh, and all right. So sorry, uh, those out there uh, in the presentation, I was taking care of one of the, the webinar attendees here. So poll question number two is, again, feel free to answer these. On average, how many impressions in person or online does it take for people to remember a brand? Okay, and an uh, impression is somebody seeing a message, somebody seeing your logo coming to your website, any kind of your brand is in front of their face impression. Thank you for that clarification, mm -hmm. because at times it's kind of hard <laughs> I've had to that understand. question before. <laughs> I yeah. make sure. <laughs> um, so again, um, how many impressions does it take uh, for people to remember a brand? It's eight, five through seven impressions. B, 10 to 15 uh, impressions, C, 1 uh, to 3 impressions, or D, more than 15 impressions uh, needed for people uh, to remember your brand. So that being said, I uh, believe the poll question is out there. Uh, it's processing right now. Uh, people are answering it, as I see here. Um, I'm going to say, you know, at times we're so busy that we see things, but we don't retain them. I'm going to go with B, 10 through 15. 15. Okay. Yeah, kind of sort of, I, I think. Yeah, but again, that one would make sense because at least you're aware we definitely have a lot of um, branding or, or marketing messages in front of our faces that we can't, we can't con um, remember them all or concentrate on them all yeah, <laughs> for correct. sure. All right. So let's see what we got here now, Lacey, the answer from our attendees. Again, thank you for your participation and not being threatened by, is this right or wrong? Um, <laughs> we have that the majority believe that it's going to be A, five, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, C, one, two, three impressions. One, three. Okay. So they're easily impressed, so they, 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 they keep it right away. So uh, <laughs> the next one is B, 10 through 15 itself so you know they might be like me you know i i see things but i don't take them in that quick at times or and the last one is five to seven a so do you mind enlightening us and letting us know how many impressions does it really take to become uh, i guess remember remember uh, yeah. yeah according to the website small biz genius it takes five to seven impressions for people to remember a brand so that answer is a i definitely uh i know that i personally need a lot of impressions before i'm going to remember a new brand <laughs> so it makes There's sense so to me i might yeah i might even be in the 10 to 15 range because yeah. <laughs> i tend to ignore a lot until um I really care about something and then I'm very loyal. I'm very loyal to the brands that I like. I can see so. that the detergent of yours 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm one of those consumers. It's hard to switch me over. All yeah. right. So moving light right along. We're going to talk about how you can build your brand strategy. So this is kind of a list of questions that you should think about or maybe even create a um, document about your business. This is something that can definitely fit into a business plan if you're working on that document anyway. A brand strategy and a really in-depth kind of look like this will provide, it would be um, really beneficial to you. So um, organize these uh, following information about your business. What is your purpose? Okay, so why are you here? What are you trying to accomplish? What is the value in your products and your business and everything that your business produces either online or otherwise that will get your target customers excited to buy your products or sign up for your newsletter or follow you on social media? What what is that purpose um and then the vision what it, that's what you see in your future so in the future we're going to what where are we going to accomplish is the the business what is your mission with your um so don't confuse your business mission with your personal mission as a business owner. So for example, I want to be my own boss or I want to be my own uh you know, make my own money or something like that. That is a personal mission. A business mission is what is your business mission? What is your business going to get done? And what is your business want as much as you want to be your own boss or something like that? So don't confuse the personal mission with your business mission. Um, what are your values? What's important to you? Is it important that you ethically produce your products or that you provide the best customer service in the, in the industry or that you have the best quality product or that you have a luxury brand? What are your values? as a business, this is going to help you to create that brand personality and connect with those people who really value the same thing. Um, what's your value proposition? What do you, what value for your customer's money, they're trading their money for your, what, what's the value? Why is it better than other, other companies? Um, what problems do you solve for your customers? So exactly what's the problem that your business swoops in and corrects? Um, what, how do you serve your target audience? How are you serving them? How are, how are they benefiting from your online presence, from um, uh, your brand's existence? What's your brand's personality, voice, and tone? So this one is where you want to get creative. Are you speaking in a voice that is super professional and corporate and um, more sterilized? Or are you speaking in a tone or your, is your brand speaking in a tone that's much more casual? We're not those big corporate people. We're laid back, you know? <laughs> um, so you're going to kind of think about the personality of your brand you want to put a lot of thought into it, even if it is that casual tone, because you got to stay consistent. People shouldn't, your, your people who are going to connect with your brand are going to want it to be consistent. So really think about what will those people want? How will they want to be spoken to by your brand? Uh, what's your tagline or slogan? What messages do you want to send to your target customers and how will you send those messages? That's just the ABCs of how are you going to get your messages, your marketing message, advertisement, your engagement, all of that in front of your customers. Are you going to rent a billboard? Are you going to be on social media? Are you going to have an amazing website? Are you going to pay for a commercial or Google ads? That's just the ABCs of how am I going to get my message in front of their faces? Um, who are your ideal customers? I can't tell you. I was just discussing this with uh, my colleague, Sarah. How many people are, they think that their uh, target audience is everybody, everybody in the world. That is not correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know that you would sell your, your product to anybody who shows up with the money and will trade it for it to you. But if you are marketing to everybody, then you're marketing to nobody because 
there are there are different products for different people. Um, if you think about it, here's here's an example. I'm going back to detergent. Now, detergent is a product that everybody uses or a lot of people use. But if you look at detergent commercials, they are not targeting everybody. A lot of them are targeting parents. Parents, because that's where they make most of their money. While everybody has a, a uh, they're, they're using laundry detergent, the most of their money is made from parents because their kids are getting their, their clothes dirty all the time. Kids are very expensive. You can't afford to be replacing clothing all the time. So they send the message that you can use our detergent. You can clean your kids clothes and it will keep them looking fresh. You don't have to buy new clothes. We're going to take care of caring for the clothing that you've already purchased. Now, that's my example, but you can also apply that to different um, products. Maybe if you are uh, in the mood to do some research, maybe like pay attention to some advertising that you see and just think, who are they targeting? Who are they targeting um, with this message? And um, apply that to your your own business is who is going to be excited and thrilled to have your product. And um, okay, so that's about your ideal customers. And what ways do you serve your ideal customers? So you know who they are now. How are you making those people squeal with delight every time they open the package that is from your business or they uh, go into your store or they interact with your online, um, uh, online activity? All of that, what are you doing um, to uh, delight them, okay, is, is uh, what you should think about or what will you do to delight those people. Okay, talking about your brand logo, this is just a physical representation of your brand. This is what you want to consider. Typography, colors, the imagery you use, additional elements such as shape, tagline or slogan, tone of voice and vocabulary. Now, not everything is going to apply to every single business, but hopefully you, if you haven't already got a logo, you're going to put some thought into this in the future. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of why this is important and how this is used in kind of the real world and um, what you should shoot for as far as, as creating that same type of experience for your customers. Um, so if you don't already have a logo, you can create your own using um, various tools online, or maybe you are excellent at uh, your own graphic design and you have your own software and that's great. If not, um, you can take a look at canva.com or crello.com. They're both very user-friendly um, websites with some tools and you can it can definitely get you started with creating your own logo. If you want to hire somebody else to do it, there's websites such as Fiverr or Upwork, and you can kind of hire a freelance artist. The great thing about those websites is that you can take a look at, if you find a graphic artist, you can take a look at some of their past uh, art. You know, they, they usually have a few pictures up of things that they've done in the past, and you can find somebody that you think their uh, their abilities can really match with your vision. Um, I've definitely used both Fiverr and Upwork um, to find uh, um, freelance people for different re reasons, not just this, but um, the, you can definitely find some very talented uh, uh, graphic designers on there. So you want to put your thoughts into, a lot of thought into your own logo and your own brand that, like I said, that physical representation of your business. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of businesses that have really, really used this um, to uh, benefit their company. So there is, for example, there is a color of blue that is associated with a certain jewelry store. And this is a very specific shade of like a teal blue, and they have it on all their boxes, their bags, everything like that. You may know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the color Tiffany blue. 
that you can you can go buy Tiffany blue paint, but that Tiffany word comes from Tiffany and Co jewelry store. So um, that is their color of blue and they have made it blue or teal, however you want to say it, but um, they have made it. It's such a um, iconic color that um, and they have really incorporated their color so much that it is as soon as you see that color, you know who it's from. Um, if you ever want to get some jewelry lover a nice gift and you pull out a box of that color, I guarantee they're going to freak out and they're going to be super excited because we all know <laughs> the, the color of Tiffany blue. So the, you know, they started out they have this specific color and they um of course they they had some help they have a, a movie and they they're very very famous and all of that but that color being synonymous with their um brand is kind of an, an example of something that you could create for your own business maybe your color or your uh image is something else but it is so ingrained and it is so right there in your customer's face that as soon as they see a delivery from your business or they walk into your store or something like that and they know exactly where they are because it's so specific to your company. Um, another example of, of really great branding with a logo that I did, did want to mention is um, the company Chanel. So if you don't know, Chanel is, they create, they have a luxury brand. They're kind of expensive. They have bags. They have um, a lot of uh, products, makeup, things like that. So the thing is, on their website, they have these little cotton pads, okay? These little cotton pads are the least expensive thing on their website. You can purchase them for... I don't know, $15, $20. They're, they're not very expensive. Now, these cotton pads are for, you can put makeup remover on them, and then you can use that to remove your makeup. Okay. You can get packages of these similar pads at any drugstore for just a, a dollar or two. But on Chanel, they're $15, $20. Okay. So you order those, the cheapest thing on the Chanel website, and if you uh, get it, it comes wrapped in this very, very fancy tissue paper. It's in a nice box. It's got the cute Chanel stickers. It's got everything in there as if you had purchased a $5,000 hand bag or something like that. It gets the same exact treatment as their higher end, more expensive products that you may order online. What that is, that is saying to your customers, anything with the Chanel logo on it is special even these $15 makeup removing pads. So <laughs> my, um, my challenge to you is how do you create, if, especially if you're trying to create a luxury brand, is how do you create that same message without necessarily saying it, but it's your brand. It's if you order something that is from my company, it is special and I'm gonna show you it's special. So that's that's the challenge um and i've actually seen a lot of etsy sellers do something similar that is appropriate for their brand that is absolutely absolutely genius they include little stickers for their people or they include a little bag of gifts or something like that that just delight delights their customers so that they remember them and they're coming back for more so keep that in mind Okay, Lacey, you want to take a, yeah. a a little water break there? I mean, uh, but you keep going, and and I make. Uh, sure. Uh, I just want to say something uh, based on the on what you've been talking about, especially on the brands. I just saw the doc documentary or movie Air Jordan. Oh, I, did, I watched that recently too. It, so good. It was created, <laughs> and how the different brands went from being number one. Now it's like number two or number three, and now Nike is there, and. Air Jordans are high-end shoes. I mean, people wearing them to dress nice. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that the branding, it was all around him as a person. So, and it's given Nike so much money in this world that uh, something about the building strategies that you mentioned as well is when they're promoting toys, all you see is kids. And instead of the parents with the, 
with the detergent, all you see is kids playing with this stuff. And even the parents at times, they put them there as well. Yes. So that's something that is targeted to that. Um, with the with the brand logo, um, I have bought my wife some of that Tiffany stuff, uh -huh. and I, by mistake, reused the bag for something else. Oh, you were oh, in trouble. Not, exactly. <laughs> it was not a pretty experience. So to those out there, if you buy something, if you want to keep the bag, don't do not put something else in there because do you, not. It's not appreciated. So, um, besides that, um, that's a high quality and uh, stuff. They even have um, uh, Tiffany Nike and Tiffany a collaboration, uh -huh. and they have even Air Force ones together. That they are amazingly looking shoes. But uh, yeah, besides that, uh, hopefully you took a swig of water and <laughs> you're ready for, for to continue. Thank you for sharing that. I no. love consumer just behavior and things like that. So I, I do appreciate that. And that was very insightful. Yes, don't ever reuse your Tiffany bag unless you are buying another Tiffany product. <laughs> um, but yes, that was very interesting. And um, thank you for adding that because those were excellent, excellent examples. And even though you're a small business now, you're not Nike yet, you never know what you're going to build your business into. So you can really take a lot, like he was saying, from those stories that um, uh, other people have used, you know, those strategies, uh, things that they have done to uh, really build a brand, like he said. And um, so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So talking about interacting with your audience. So now that you understand your brand at this point, the next step is to determine and plan how you're going to uh, connect your brand to your ideal customers and how your brand is going to make an impression on and interact with your customers. So we're going to talk about online because that's where most of it's at these days, online and interaction. So you're going to talk about, we're going to uh, look at social media. What, if any, social media platforms do you plan to use for your brand? Now, um, I go much more into de uh, depth on this, pro uh, this um, social media in a different webinar about specifically social media. But what you want to think about is where your targeted customers, where those ideal customers are going to hang out online. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? If you don't know, maybe you'll want to experiment a bit with um, uh, where you want to post most regularly. So I'll tell you, um, I have a side business with uh, digital marketing. As Bichel mentioned, I got a degree in it. So I have this side business and I thought, okay, my, my primary social media is going to be LinkedIn. Little did I know, after doing some uh, some uh, experimentation, my best place to find clients is actually on Instagram. So surprised me, but that's definitely where I'm going to spend most of my time um, creating content is Instagram instead of uh, the, the places where they're not looking for me. <laughs> so think about that for your business. Where are your ideal customers hanging out? Your website. What's the best way to organize your business's website to best serve your audience? Consider your messages, your content, the design aspects such as color scheme, fonts, graphics, etc. What, um, what, uh, these are things that it's very obvious if you'll look at blogs who, um, bloggers, you can really tell who they are targeting by the fonts, by the, the scheme of things that their, their pictures, what they're including in their visual aspects of their websites. You can really tell who they're trying to attract to their website by all that. But yeah, you'll want to consider that in, in your own website and keep everything nice and organized because we humans like that. Um, I'm sure you've been to a website that wasn't very well organized and your brain said, nope, I'm, I'm getting off of this because it actually makes you uncomfortable <laughs> and you might may not even consciously know it. But yeah, your brain tells you to get off of that website and get onto one that is a bit better organized. So just keep that in mind. Um, online content. So we're talking about what you are sharing. What online content would your customers consider valuable? Brands that blog, this is just a, a statistic that's in, in interesting, brands that blog generate 67% more leads. Now, um, I am, uh, 
I'm going to say that that is partially because people are reading their blogs and partially because of uh, search engine optimization, which is just helping you getting uh, found being found on Google, but have a blog on your website. I talk about, I have a, a, a presentation on uh, search engine optimization, um, but I don't think I'm presenting it this year. So I would say definitely do some research on it or hire somebody who's good at it because having that blog with all those keywords tells Google what's on your website and what to who to show it to. Um, okay, so also online content, what can you share on social media that will make your customers excited to follow you? So, um, it's, I'm sure you know this as a consumer and probably as a small business owner, it's not all about the overly promotional content anymore. People won't look at that. They won't interact with it. You need to have more creative. Um, content, interesting content, something that is teaching them something or something that's making them laugh or something that they find adorable or just interesting in some way. It's not enough anymore to, to just advertise for your business. You need to have really quality content in order for people to interact with it, which causes more people to see it on their feeds. What um, or how can you use your online presence to serve, support, or connect with and delight your customers? Again, thinking about the things that your uh, brand values. Is it ethical um, business practices? Is it great luxury? Is it the just being the finest in the industry? But what can you create and share online that's going to uh, reinforce that message? So my example for an excellent um, uh, online strategy, but we really can't replicate it anymore, but I use it because, as an example because um, all of you probably remember this. You remember Share a Coke. So this was a few years ago. Coke used to put names, Butel is, is shaking his head, they used to put names or titles like mom or CEO or something like that on their Coke bottles, okay? And people would share a Coke with whomever. So if you found a Coke with your friend's name on it, you buy that Coke, you give it to them, and you can post a picture of it online. That was such a uh, successful um, online campaign that gained them millions of followers that really took their brand and kind of launched it into an online brand. Um, before that, of course, like I said, we really can't replicate that magic anymore because at that time it was kind of new and we as consumers we're excited to interact with a brand we don't really react that way quite so much anymore but i do feel like you can um re replicate it on a smaller scale for your smaller businesses by sharing those pictures or encouraging your um customers to share online um, their pictures of them using your product or, uh, you know, things like that. And I, I've seen a lot of businesses do that very successfully. You know, you make a beautiful dress and you, you have your customer um, show a picture of themselves online and then you can pass that on. You can, you can post that to your feed. It makes everybody happy. <laughs> so just keep that in mind, that online content, um, what, what you would like to do as a strategy to get your customers excited about what you're doing. Okay, talking about reviews. Now, reviews are one, they are so important. And you may even know this as a consumer, how important reviews are to you. Some of us, you know, we don't care, but a lot of us do. In fact, here we are, about 95% of customers read reviews before they make a purchase. I'm one of those customers. Uh, you may be too. You want to read other people's reviews. You don't want to hear from the company. You don't want to hear from anybody who is getting a benefit from telling you this is great. I want to hear from a person who has purchased it and they either like it or they don't. 95% of consumers or customers, excuse me, read reviews before they make a purchase purchase. 93% of customers will read reviews of local businesses to determine its quality. So when you do the Google search of, of restaurants near me or something like that, you're going to look 
at the reviews of local businesses. That's 93%. Um, when a product gets five uh, reviews, the likelihood of it being purchased increases by 270%. I it's so funny because these statistics, it's it's so easy to believe because personally, if I'm ordering something online and it doesn't have any reviews, even if it's the least expensive version of that product, I probably won't buy it because I, I would rather buy something with at least two or three reviews. So I can definitely see why that oh, even five reviews increases the likelihood of it being sold. If um, businesses have more than nine current reviews, so recent reviews in the last few weeks, um, they earn 52% more revenue than the average. If a business has more than 25 current reviews, it increases by 108%. So these are just examples. These are just uh, numbers to give you an idea of how important reviews are and how you don't want to sleep on them. If you have an online presence um, at all, you definitely want to get your reviews. Now, how do you do that? So how do we encourage reviews? Number one is respond to all of them. Now, really for this, I'm talking about Yelp and um, uh, Google, things like that, where they will allow the business to respond to reviews. My big thing on here is to respond to all of them good and bad. A lot of customer, or excuse me, a lot of businesses make the mistake of only responding to the negative reviews to say, hey, come in and we'll correct this or something like that. But that's not um, what you want to do. You really want to respond to everybody and even those positive reviews. Hey, we're so glad that you came in. Thank you so much for leaving this review. Why do we do that? Because for one thing, it does humanize your business. It adds a human quality to your business that consumers love. Second of all, they know that their their um, review is going to be read. So they are going to take that into consideration when writing the review. Um, they know that it's going to um, probably be responded to by a person. So that kind of keeps trolling down if you know what I'm talking about it's, it's those people who are maybe uh, giving an unfair review or something like that if they know that there is a human on the other end who's going to respond to it kind of keeps that anonym anonymousness down <laughs> um, and I know that that's not the right word but I don't think I can get the other word out right now <laughs> um, anonymity okay um Avoid incentivizing or paying for a review. So avoid, and you may have seen this already. If you, if you leave me a review, I'll send you a $20 gift card or this or that. You kind of want to avoid that if you can, um, because that ends up undermining your own reputation in the long run. We have, as consumers, we've become pretty adept at, um, being able to identify fake reviews um, and you can kind of see them uh, especially on sites like Amazon places where you know they're selling a whole lot of products and there's a whole lot of reviews you can really read through those reviews and you can tell the ones that actually uh, have the product and used it and the ones who are just just writing a review they're not as specific they're not as valuable to you and that undermines your own reputation in the long run when people see a lot of that they say i can't trust this this person was paid or whatever so um try to avoid incentivizing too much for those like you can give a little discount maybe a little cu a coupon hey thanks so much for taking your time to do that here's 15 percent off your next purchase that's not anything big or major that's a reasonable uh a reward for somebody's time um simply asking customers to leave a review especially you small business owners we as people in the community, we are rooting for our small business owners by, by nature. We want you to um, do well. And so say, saying to your customers, hey, will you leave us a review um, online or here or there? A lot of people will do it. I'm one of those people who will do it. And specifically asking me for one um, 
personally, and maybe um, it's the same for you, is um, it reminds me, oh, this does matter to them. So uh, it will be seen by somebody. So being asked or asking them in person, if you see them, uh, if they're coming into a store, or just asking them in an email, hey, thank you so much for your purchase. If you don't mind leaving me a review, this is how we get better, blah, blah, blah. That really does increase uh, the people's likelihood of leaving you a review. Um, a s yes, so that is ways to get people to review your products um, as well. Okay. Lacey, if I may, oh, if yes. I may say, um, when I don't see a review, mm -hmm. I see it as negative. Agreed. So I'm not going to purchase. You know, there's no reviews. What I'm going to do? Not only that, I'm at that website. I review it, but then I search it and uh -huh. read those other reviews as well yeah. to make sure that it makes sense. And, you know, yeah. it runs too large, it runs too small, you know, you need to know what you're getting. So, again, a review is very, very yeah. important. Very in, important. In, in so, yeah. Um, and, I mean, that statistic of 95% is, is it didn't surprise me at all. Yeah, people are reading the re those reviews because more and more of us are ordering things online that we can't try on, we can't see in person. We really re rely on it. So thank you for that. You're right. Me, I'm the same way. <laughs> and, it, yes, if I don't see a review, I'm probably going to pass it up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right. So talking about protecting your brand. So here is ways in different degrees that you can protect your brand. So claim your online domain and all social media profiles. So that's step one. This isn't going to cost you anything. So um, your online domain, you don't want anybody to be able to buy even if you're not going to have a website, you don't want anybody else to be able to buy www.yourbrandname.com, right? So even if you don't plan on having a website, you think, oh, that's not really the product that I'm selling, you wouldn't want people to be able to sell under that name under the guise of, of being the same as you. So just keep that in mind. Same with the social media profiles. I have the social media profiles for my business for on every single platform and if any new ones come out i get on that platform as well and i claim my name um even if i'm not going to use it even if i don't have any intention of it like for example i don't use twitter very much i don't get great response you know great engagement on twitter but i'm never going to give up my twitter profile and my handle because somebody else could claim it and send off the impression that that is me talking or that's my business talking so even if you're not going to use it claim that domain on social media um watermark your product pictures this is especially important to you artists you those of you who create um beautiful th um artwork or uh clothing things like that where um you have your own specific look your own specific brand put your mar watermark on those pictures because they will be stolen if you don't. Somebody's going to put your picture on their website representing or sending the impression that they are you when they are not. They're going to, if somebody orders from them, they're going to uh, create or send a far inferior product, if at all. And those customers think that it's from you. I've seen that happen to a lot of, of uh, our smaller you know, like I said, artists, businesses, Etsy shops, things like that. So protect yourself that way. Now talking about trademark, copyright, and patents. So in general, copyrights protect creative or intellectual works. Trademarks protect names, phrases, and logos. And patents protect inventions. Now what do you need for your product? Well, that is kind of going to be um, specific to you. It's going to be up to you how much you protect it. Now, deciding what you want to protect and, and to what extent is, is completely your choice. You can have a brand but decide not to protect it by registering it as a trademark. So there's nothing illegal about not registering your brand or your logo or anything like that as a trademark. However, in this case, anyone could misuse your brand or create a brand so similar to yours that people can't tell the difference between them. 
So just keep that in mind um, and keep in mind how much you want to protect yours. Um, it's it's so varied by how much it will cost you. Um, for example, you can trademark and you can protect something in one country or you can do it worldwide and it's a different price. So just just spend a lot of time thinking about how much you want to protect what you are creating. For more information, visit the United States Patent and United States Patent and Trademark Office at USPTO.gov. The last one. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yes, the last polling questions, and again, a lot of great information. Um, so those attending, what percentage of consumers said that they stay loyal to a brand? that shared their values? A, 50%, B, 62%, C, 89%, or D, 23%? They stay loyal to brands that share their values. So we're all different, certainly. Um, let's see how our attendees answer this. Uh, let's see, so the polling question's still going. I'm going to say that they stay to their brand um, nowadays 62%. I'm going to say that that's what I believe. 62%? Uh, 62%. Yeah. That their values uh, make a difference. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more seconds going. I can. Go ahead. Yeah. I can imagine it's going to be high because at least me as a consumer, I care about that quite a bit. Um, I don't want to be doing giving money to anybody who's not uh, uh, treating people right or or whatever. So I don't no, think yeah, it would and, 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 is yeah, and pretty you, reasonable. You, you utilizing like slang and stuff like that in certain uh, mm -hmm. products or something, may, people may feel withdrawn from it. They they don't see it right. So we got we got our numbers. So you were correct. It's a high number. See, eighty nine percent say that they stay loyal to brands that believe in their values. And then the next one up All is right. the sixty two percent one that they stay loyal to the brand itself. So they're pretty high numbers. Uh, people stay loyal to what they believe in. So uh, nice question. Go ahead. All right. All right, thank you so much. So the answer there was 62% according to a study conducted by Safari Digital, a digital marketing company. So a lot of people nowadays, more than it, perhaps in years past, really do care that um, brands get them um, as people. It's a different, it's definitely a different expectation than uh, due to social media, honestly, uh, than um, we have had in the past. A lot of times people just didn't, didn't care as much or they didn't think of the companies that they uh, did business with as, as that would be a necessary thing, but it definitely is an expectation today. All right, let's t go into questions here. Uh, Lacey, because of time's sake, let's leave the questions towards the end, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, that way, we can Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, exactly. We'll just go through it real quick, and we're going to save everything till uh, the end, because we are we are going a little bit long. So we're going to talk about our business membership. So if you have a new business, you don't have an account yet, you can open a business checking and savings account with us. Minimum deposit is on, of, in each of those is only $25. So it's really low minimum deposit. You get online banking, and if you enroll in online statements, you won't get any monthly fees. Paper statements cost you $5 a month month online statements are free and then you're not getting any monthly fees on top of that so that is um kind of a huge perk compared to some other institutions um so once you have your account if you're looking for um a, a credit card or a loan 
if your business is brand new and it's uh, less than two years old, you can apply for up to $40,000 for a business auto loan or up to 20 uh, B business visa platinum credit card for, with a credit limit of up to $20,000. Now, if your business has been in operation a little bit longer, you do have two years of uh, tax income history under your belt. You can apply for different types of loans, such as um, auto loans, planes, um, uh, boats, things like that, that $40,000 cap is no longer there. You can do equipment loans, real estate, other vehicles, uh, lines of credit loans, and overdraft protection loans. Um, overdraft protection is is available actually um, for, for businesses that are less than two years old as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind and definitely get in touch with us if you have any specific questions. Here's our contact information. I'm going to go ahead and leave that up for the time being so that you know how to get in contact with us and um, get, yeah, just let us know your specific needs. All right, Lacey, I'm going to take over here for a moment. Uh, we want to do some public service announcements before we go into the other side of the, um, um, uh, let's see here. So, for those out there that want to know our different offers that we have here for our current members and future members, feel, for, feel free to go to aacreditunion.org, hit in offers, and you'll be able to see what we have going on right now. Just a quick overview. We have a new product, a new credit card, signature credit card. It has cash back on it. It also a very great, good, good rate. So look what's in your wallet, compare it to this, and you'll see that our rate most likely is going to beat it if you carry a balance on your credit card. And then we have uh, share, share certificates. Uh, so you can save money at a higher interest rate for one year at 5.12 annual percent yield. So that's a great way so you can save money. It's good. It's for a one year, 12 month share certificate. It starts at $1,000. And uh, this offer is good until the end of this month. Again, when you get a mortgage, you get you get more uh, perks, connection points, et cetera. But you can see that once you talk to the loan officer, they'll be able to give you more information or any loan officer in reference to the credit card or anybody that it's a member service rep in reference to the share certificate and visit us at AA Credit Union Offers. The next one is for those that are currently member owners of the credit union itself, they'll be able to refer um, somebody and they'll get $25 once the account's open. Usually you want to refer your family members, wife, kids, uh, parents, brothers, sisters. Uh, based on that, then it becomes that you can uh, refer your coworkers as well, um, as long as you're in the air transportation industry itself, um, and up to 10 a year, so that's $250. Uh, we want to make sure that you take advantage of that itself. Again, give the gift of membership so people's financial um, wellness can increase and they'll be better financially fit. Um, before we go here, I need to make certain that this is a plus. We are celebrating 87 years as a credit union. Visit your local branch. Go into our website, as mentioned before. There's an opportunity for three lucky individuals to win $1,000 this week. This is this week only. Also, uh, for those that are referring other individuals, instead of the individual, you only getting $25, the other party opening the account is going to get $26. One is the membership fee, and $25 will be credited to their account instead of a regular $6. So both parties are going to get the $25. That's only this week. Only this week, from Monday through Saturday, only this week. After that, it'll be the regular $6 when you refer somebody. So you may want to take advantage of that. And remember that once a member, you're always a member, even if you decide to leave uh, the airline transportation industry itself, decide to go to work for the city, you can always be a member and take advantage of our credit union benefits itself. Um, visit our website for our future events happening. Uh, future webinars itself. Uh, the next couple webinars coming up are one, surviving inflation. The second one is 
uh, financing a vehicle the smart way. Uh, it's 201, so uh, send those questions that you may have in your survey. That way one of our subject matter experts can touch back to you and get back in touch. Uh, thanks again for joining us, tuning in. Remember that if um, we didn't get to the question, um, we'll make sure somebody gets in contact with you. As uh, Lacey said, social media is important, so please make sure you follow us, your financial institution, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and recently, not as recent, but we've been in YouTube as well, so you can watch any of our webinars. Just go American Airlines Credit Union, and you'll be able to see over a year of uh, videos that webinars that we have in reference to different topics out there, financing a car, retirement, businesses, uh, your financial wellness. Again, they are no cost. You can share with your coworkers, with your family members. Don't forget that hit that like, subscribe, and uh, make sure that you follow us on YouTube. That way you can get notices when you, um, uh, when we're going to come up in live itself. Again, it's past the time. Uh, if somebody wants to talk to any of you, Lacey, do they need to make an appointment or just call you or email you itself? What's the deal with that? I apologize. I'm having a tough time with my audio here. But um, yes, if if you do not need to make an appointment, uh, definitely you can email us or uh, call us and uh, between 8 and 5 central time, we'll be able to help you out. All right. Since uh, that was one that came up that I believe is very important for those out there that joined us at the webinar, how to get in touch with you. Here's that, that uh, uh, slide. And remember, we're celebrating 87 years. Take advantage of the drawings, three drawings that we're going to have for the $1,000. Take advantage of all the products and services that we have. Thank you for joining us. Take care. Stay safe. Lacey, any final words? Thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe.